So how this test is administered, we're going to step up on this test, uh, on this step strip thing right here. Uh, we're going to measure a little bit of capacity. This can be used to predict your yield max. So I'm going to demonstrate on what we're supposed to do. We're going to start at 88 beats per minute. We're going to do this for three minutes. So I'm going to show you how to do it, and then you're going to get up and do it for me, all right? So you hear the beat, and this is how you go with it. Step up, down. Step up, down. Okay, you understand that? All right, then stand up for minutes. We're going to do this for three, uh, three minutes. So when I tell you to start, go ahead and start. All right, for the submaximal aerobic laboratory test, what we what I did was I did a Queens College step test for my subject. What this measures, this measures your VO2 max prediction. So we get these calculations from the resting heart rate and the post heart rate. We times that by four, and then we plug that into equation we got down here. This will be able to predict your VO2 max. It's not as accurate as a doing an actual treadmill test uh, hooked up to a metabolic cart, but this result shows a range of where you should be at for your VO2 max. So doing a Queen's College step test was able to tell me that her VO2 max was about 45.9. Okay, so today we're going to do a stem flow capillary test on you. All right, so first we're going to start at the triceps. There's three sides we're going to have to do. It's measured body fat percentage, okay? So we're going to start with the triceps. Might do a little pinch. I'm going to the super W end, so this causes a pinch right here. Probably just diagonal pinch for you. I'm just trying to do that. Yeah, 12 for that one. Last one. Right here. Right here. Right here. Yeah, 10 for that one. Not a lot, though. And then also with the skin fold three site test. So we took three uh, skin fold measurements, which were the tricep. I got 13 for that. Super iliac, I got 12 for that. And the abdominal, I got 10. Then we plug it into the body dis density calculation. After we plug it in and solved it, I got 1.06. Then we use the body density uh, calculation that we got, and then we convert that into body fat percentage. The skin fold measurements were used to determine body fatness. And then it's the measurement of the subcutaneous fat on a person's body. So after you plug into the equation, the body fat percentage equation, I got 7.55, which is below the essential fat range for her age and her uh, height. All right, so today we're going to be doing a flexibility test. So how we do this, we're going to measure you by doing a traditional set reach. What that means we're going to take our shoes off, we're going to put your feet on here in this green box, and then we're going to reach out as far as we can. We're going to hold it for two seconds. And then that's when we get your measure for your flexibility, okay? So first, we're going to start with you taking your shoes off for me. 
All right, we're going ahead and sit right, sit down right here for me, please, and put your feet flat on this green box. And then we're going to put our arms up, okay? Put our arms up. And you're going to put one over the other, just like how you did this right here. And when we're going to push, we're going to push. Do not force it out there. Just push as much as you can, and just wherever it lands, it lands. And just hold it for two seconds for me, okay? So we're going to go ahead and do that right now. Push for me. Great job, great job. And we're going to do another trial for you. Okay, and go. You can do it again. Great job. So for the traditional sit and reach test, this is what we did to you to measure flexibility. This is a way to show if somebody is is flexible or not that much flexible. So we did two trials. Trial one, I got 38 centimeters. Trial two, I got 37 centimeters. The purpose of this was to measure flexibility, of course. So today we're gonna to take your height, okay? To get the BMI, which is basically your body mass index, we gotta take your height first, and we're gonna have you take your weight. But right now, we're gonna take your height. So let me have you take your shoes off for me. We're gonna put our feet flat on this plastic thing right here and back towards the measurement seat. Let me slide this down for you. You make it reach the top of your head. All right, you can go ahead and stop out for me. Perfect. Okay, so what we're going to do here today, we're going to take your weight mass. Yeah, we're going to have an equation for your body mass index. So what I'm going to have you do first, take your shoes off first. Yeah, we're going to have a little we're going to go ahead and step up here on the scale, put both feet back in there, stand there for me. That was great, right? Yeah, All right, All right, we're going to step off for me. All right, so body mass index. Body mass index shows the health status of a person. So either they're overweight, obese, or underweight, or at a normal range. So the way we find body mass index, we divide weight in kilograms and height in meters squared. So my subject height was 163 centimeters, and that equals 1.63 meters. The weight of her was 107.2 pounds, which would equal 48.6 kilograms. So after that calculation, I got a body mass index of 18.29. The subject was about you know 163 centimeters, which means that the body mass index that she that she has is that she is underweight, slightly, not a lot though. And then also with the skin fold three site test. So we took three uh, skin fold measurements, which was a tricep, I got 13 for that. Super iliac, I got 12 for that. And the abdominal, I got 10. Then we plug it into the body dis density calculation. After we plug it in and solved it, I got 1.06. Then we use the body density uh calculation that we got and then we convert that into body fat percentage the skin fold measurements were used to determine body fatness and then it's the measurement of the subcutaneous fat on a person's body so after you plug into the equation the body fat percentage equation i got 7.55 which is below the essential fat range for her age and her uh height Today we're going to do a muscular endurance test, all right? So basically what we're going to do is a flex on the day, all right? How are we going to do that? When we get ready to start, we're going to step up on this uh, stool right here. And then we're going to put our hands overhand, okay? And you want to hold as, as long as you can with your chin above the bar. And then when you're ready to just you know, stop, just relax your arms and just drop down for me, okay? All right, so we're going to go ahead and stand up for me. So for muscular endurance, I've decided to do a flex arm hang for my subject. This consists of you putting your hands over hand on the bar 
and pulling yourself up and keeping your chin over the bar for however long you can stay up there. My subject did it for 20 seconds. This test shows the ability of the muscle to repeatedly exert force against resistance. So basically the resistance was her body and gravity. So if she can stay up there for a pretty good amount of time, this shows how much muscular endurance that she has in her body. What we're gonna to do today, we're gonna to do a one rep maximal strength test. This will measure the maximal strength. But before we get started, I gotta tell you how to squat. So the rules of how to squat, you wanna put your hands right here, the pinky right here on this front, you know, smooth part of the bar. You put the other pinky on this other smooth part of the bar as well. You wanna grab around the bar, and you wanna dip up under. Once you dip up under, you lift up, make sure the bar is on your traps. And we're going to step back a little bit. Make sure I see a shorter width of the bar. And then we're going to go down. Try to get all the way down to 90 degrees where your legs are making a 90 degree angle. Like so. And then we're going to push up. Keep our head up, our back straight. All right. And that's how you do the squat. So, what we're going to do, we're going to start off with our 40 to 60 percent. So, your 40 to 60 percent would be 45 pounds, which is just the bar. I'll stand back here behind you for a spot if you need it. Alright, good job. One. Line it up. Two. There you go. Make sure it's controlled. Three. Four. Five. Alright. Now, for the next set, we're going to do 60 to 80 percent. So while you sit here and just rest a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and put 10 pounds on each side of the bar. We're going to do the same thing as we did for 40 to 60 of uh, increment. The last set we just did, we're just going to go ahead and step in here. We're going to do the same thing. Make sure your hands are out here a little bit. There we go. There we go. One. Two. You didn't use water. Four. Very nice. You should go. Five. There we go. Done, girl? Take a rest a little bit. Now we are going to do our 90% of our max. This causes one to three reps, all right? And then we're going to put another 10 on the bar. All right, so we're going to go ahead and step in here. Make sure our hand placement is right. And make sure we're ready to go. All right, there you go. Bar is good. Stand behind you. Spot you. We're one to three reps. There we go. One. Two. There we go. Great job. Now, we're going to do a one rep max. Think you ready for it? Yep. All right. So, we're going to do the max amount of weights you can do. We're going to throw on a 25 on the bar. This will be 95 pounds, okay? So, what we're going to do, make sure we got our hand placement right before we get up under the bar, okay? We get up under the bar. Lift on up. I'm going to stand behind you. Okay, you ready? Okay. So go ahead and get back up. There we go. Go ahead and rack it for me. Great job. So for the laboratory test I did to determine muscular strength, I did a one rep max on my subject, which was a squat max. So how you do this, you go by increments uh, 40, per 60, 40 to 60 percent of their max, which was 45 pounds. She did that for about three to five reps. 60 to 80 was the same, but we went up in weight with 65 pounds. She did about three to five reps. And then 90% is pretty much a one rep before your max low. So she did 85 pounds for one rep. And then the max low, she did 95 pounds. So basically what this test do is to measure your muscular strength. This is for the lower body. And then we're gonna measure a muscular power test. So by doing that, we're gonna do a vertical jump. So how we do this, we wanna bend at our knees, swing our hands back, and then we're gonna explode through with our hands swinging forward, okay? We're gonna do this three times. So go ahead and step on the mat for me. All right, we're gonna squat down. We're gonna explode up. Hands back, there we go. Good job. That's fine. Okay, all right, we're gonna step back down. Make sure you start with your hands back. Squat down, explode through. Good job. Okay, here are the results for the test we did with the switch mat. This measures muscular power. 
So with the switch mat, we did a counter movement. This means throwing your arms up in the air as you follow through the jump. So we plug that 158.5 centimeters into the equation and your body weight and the height as well. 
And then we got for the average power, we got 6,243.52 watts.